Well, hello there and good morning. Welcome to our service today. My name's Reverend Kevin Lewis, the vicar here at the Church of the Good Shepherd. Wherever you are watching this service video from, you are very welcome. I know we've picked up a few viewers from uh, around the world or locally, so whoever you are, uh, you're very welcome. I'm going to start, uh, unusually, with a joke. So a priest, an imam and a rabbit walked into a blood test centre and the rabbit said, I think I'm a typo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Maybe a better way of starting the service would be with uh, a psalm. Should I have turned to my psalm book and not my joke book? OK, uh, so Psalm 148 as we begin, as we begin on this Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Easter, the 2nd of May, 2021. Psalm 148, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights above, praise him all his angels, praise him all his heavenly hosts, praise him sun and moon, praise him you shining stars, praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. As we gather in our weird and wonderful way uh, today, we join in worship with the whole of creation. So if you don't feel like worshipping, if you don't feel like joining in uh, with the songs or the prayers, if you uh, feel a bit out of it and your faith is struggling, well, let us worship with you and for you. Let's join in with the song of creation uh, as we celebrate who God is, who Jesus is and what he has done for us. So we're going to start as we sing in our own way, Beautiful Saviour.
in baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
We read from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar, for whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. May God bless to us this reading from his holy word. Amen. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The theme of this week's readings is love again. The writer of One Don is making the point that it all begins with God's love. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. It's the essential basic fact of our faith. God is love. Not love is God, mind, but God is love. And perhaps we need to hear this over and over again until we accept its truth, its power and its light. Until our souls are so entwined with God's love that they cannot be separated. Much like the trees in the Captain Corelli quote about love. 
Perhaps we need to hear it until we cannot help but love one another because we are so full of God's love that the only reasonable response is to let that love flow from us to those around us. If we ever reach a stage that we think we have outgrown God's love or that we can go it alone now as mature Christian disciples, then we've missed the point. We can never go beyond this. We can never outgrow this relationship. God is where love starts and where love ends. God is relationship, Father, Son and Holy Spirit entwined and entangled three persons in one God, the perfect Trinity. With no end and no beginning, no hierarchy, no first and no last, just perfect love. Love is active. It's an action. We know this by looking at God at the Father and the Son, at God made known, made visible, tangible in the sending of the Son to be with us, to show us how to live and how to love and then to die for us, not in an act of malice or anger, but in an act of perfect and eternal love. God loved us first. He came towards us. We say in the post-communion prayer sometimes, when we were still far off, you came and met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. The incarnation of God was a declaration of this reckless, overwhelming love. Jesus taught us, about the actions of love in parables and in his sermons and his teaching. And in each it is the movement of God towards us which makes the countercultural point that God comes towards us. He seeks us out, he reaches towards us. The parable which we have commonly called the parodical son is my favourite example of this. This is in the Jesus Storybook Bible. It's called, the, it's called running away. And this is how that version tells the end part when the son comes home. It says this, as he, the son, as he starts for home, though, he begins to worry. Dad won't love me anymore. I've been too bad. He won't want me for his son anymore. And so he practices his I'm sorry speech. And all this time, what he doesn't know is that day after day, his dad has been standing on his porch, straining his eye, looking into the distance, waiting for his son to come home. He just can't stop loving him. He longs for the sound of the boy's voice. He can't be happy until he gets him back. The son is still a long way off, but his dad sees him coming. What will the dad do? Fold his arms and frown, shout, that'll teach you and just you wait, young man. No, that's not how this story goes. The dad leaps off the porch, races down the hill, through the gap in the hedge, up the road. And before his son can even begin his I'm sorry speech, his dad runs to him, throws his arms of love around him and can't stop kissing him. I love the image of a father. I can see him hitching up his robes, kicking off his sandals because you can't run in sandals and running harder and faster than he has done in years. I love the idea that he silences the son's words with kisses and hugs, putting to bed all of those excuses and sorries that the son has, but knowing them in his heart anyway. I love that this is all done with love. And then I put myself in the son's shoes and I picture God as my father. And I allow myself to imagine being smothered by God's love, knocked over as he runs towards me with his arms wide open, having looked out for me, chased me, never given up on me. And I don't think that this story tells of a once in a lifetime occurrence. I don't think it's a picture of coming to faith or once in a lifetime salvation. I think it's a picture of how we walk away from God all of the time how we retreat into our shame and our pain, how we back off when we think we should or could be cope alone. And in those moments, when we can't see a way back to God, to faith, to our church family, or perhaps we've gotten so used to doing things on our own that we don't notice how hard it is. It 
it's then that God sees us, comes towards us, runs to us and sweeps us off our feet into his loving arms where we can rest and be restored. Where we don't have to hold anything in, where we can share the load, be ourselves, be loved. It's here in this space that God's spirit rests on us and in us. And we know deep in our being that we are loved. Because God's love is long term. God isn't just love on a good day or when we're being super holy or coming to church or saying our prayers. God is always love. The letter we've read puts it like this. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Abide is an active word meaning to dwell or to continue in. It's not a passive state. We hear a lot about abiding in our gospel reading today, also by John. Here abiding is both an invite and a command. It's a call to dependency. It's not an invite to do anything particular, but an invitation to a place of dwelling, a state of being. It's also an invite to community. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Not one of us is a vine. We are all branches. We're all called to remain in Christ, not alone, but together. Abiding means doing this life of discipleship and faith in community as part of the body of Christ, as a branch of the vine. Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. If we try and go it alone, or perhaps as a church community, we attempt something without being rooted in Christ, we will fail. We are abiding in Christ together. I don't know if you've ever looked closely at a vine, but it's not a neat and tidy plant. Its base and its branches are knotted and twisted and it gets its shape and support from what is around it. I like to think that this is a picture of the church, perhaps. Abiding in Christ and growing messy, intertwined, interdependent branches who are all disciples. Holding together as we grow and flourish and thrive. By dwelling in love, we dwell in God. It's here that our life is sustained. It's here we are most fruitful and most free. God's love is the ground for new possibility, new growth, because love grows from love just as the branches grow from the vine. To end, I want to look at verse 18 which says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. The phrase, do not be afraid or similar, appears 365 times in the Bible. Scripture daily whispers this reassurance over and over to different people in different circumstances, in different times and places. And here we learn that perfect love casts out fear. Where can we see perfect love? In Jesus. In his incarnation, in his actions, his words, his stories, his teaching, his preaching, his humanity, his death and his resurrection. Jesus says, I see you. I'm with you. I love you. Now hold on to me. Call on my name. Hold my outstretched hand. I've got you. I've always got you. I've always been here. My love has always been casting out fear. Even in the middle of the storm, the chaos, the pain, the isolation, the fear, I am with you. God revealed his love for us by sending us Jesus. And now we can live through him because he lives in us and his love is perfected in us. It can't be earned. We don't deserve it, but God is love. God gives his love away, casting out fear, dwelling in us because God is love. There is no fear or condemnation here, just freedom. So be bold. Know that you are loved. Overwhelmingly, recklessly, perfectly and eternally loved. Amen.
Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. been so so kind to me
for our prayers of intercession this week. We're going to do it slightly differently. We've got Christian Aid Week coming up and also Thy Kingdom Come coming up. Both things which help us to think outside of our own uh, worlds and the, the places that we live. So we're going to begin with a prayer from Christian Aid and then we're going to use a new song produced by Thy Kingdom Come and LICC. It's called We Seek Your Kingdom. It's to a very familiar tune, the tune of Abide With Me, and it's a prayer for our society and that we would be transformed. So let's pray together, firstly with Christian Aid and then with Thy Kingdom Come. And then we'll have the Lord's Prayer read by various different people from around the world. Let's pray. Great God, who makes the sun to rise and opens the heavens, hear the cry of the people, people who sow in hope for rain but reap only despair. Hear the cry of the people, people seeking shelter from the storm, their homes and hopes submerged. Hear the cry of the people. When creation is heating back with rage and resistance, Give us hope, grant us salvation. Give us a new relationship with creation, with reverence to tend this gift from you, and say once again of the earth and all you created, it is good. Amen.
our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. 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 The Collect for today, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. It's community news! Hey! Yeah, not doing that anymore? No? Oh, just for you, Gabriel. So, community news today. Uh, straight after the in-person service today at 11.30, we have Zoom coffee. Uh, it's going to be our last Zoom coffee. Uh, Zoom coffee, I think, has served its purpose. And now we have the in-person service at 10 o'clock, as well as the pre-record. Uh, numbers have dropped. So we're going to stop doing Zoom coffee this week. So this is your last opportunity to gather together for Zoom coffee. The link is in the bulletin that you will have been emailed. Next week, we have the APCM at the same time as Zoom coffee would be, and we are using the Zoom coffee link. So you can pretend you're at Zoom coffee and actually we're having our APCM. That's like our annual general meeting next Sunday morning at 11.30. So you will have received several emails about this because we're sending all the information out that you would normally get in person when you come. So we're having elections uh, or nominations for PCC members, for deanery synod members and also for a church warden. Uh, those of you who have said you will stand, uh, you need to get the form to me or to Sarah, our wonderful PCC secretary, uh, by this Sunday, please, uh, so we know what's going on. Uh, anybody else can stand at any point before the APCM. Uh, it's always useful to know in advance if you're going to do that. We're going to be voting if we need to vote uh, using Google Forms. Those again will be sent to you. Um, at the moment, we don't have more candidates than we do spaces, so we don't need to actually have a vote, but we shall see what happens at the time. So I look forward uh, to seeing you on Zoom next week for the APCM for 2020 and 2021. Also happening today is Families at Four. Uh, so if you're interested in Families at Four, please do speak to Hannah or to myself and do please pray for Families at Four as it establishes itself as a regular part of our worshipping offer. A couple of things uh, from Sutton Community Works. Sutton Community Works have got some vacancies. Firstly, a paid opportunity, which is a role uh, doing well-being phone calls, phoning people who are in temporary accommodation just to check how they're doing. Uh, if you're interested in that, then please speak to them. There's also two volunteer roles. They're looking for volunteers for the food shop, which is reopened again in the St Nicholas Centre. They're also looking for a finance trustee. Now they've changed the way the finance trustee works at Sutton Community Works. Uh, so they are outsourcing the actual bookkeeping and uh, daily finance stuff of the trust. Um, so the finance trustee is uh, simply needing to go to the meetings and oversee it rather than do the day-to-day -day things. Uh, much reduced role. So if you're interested and think you could be the finance trustee for Sun Community Works, please do get in touch with them. Friday Listening Prayer starts again next week. We've taken a break over April, but now we're back into May. We're going to start again. What is Friday Listening Prayer? Well, it does what it says on the tin. We meet on Zoom at nine o'clock on a Friday morning for half an hour. We read a small piece of scripture and then we listen and see what God might say. This means we sit in silence for quite a bit. So it's uh, like prayer for introverts, if you like. Um, 
and prayer for those of us who want to listen and believe that God does speak to us uh, through scripture uh, in a very low key kind of way. So you're welcome to join us. You don't have to say anything in the whole time. Uh, we do have conversation as well, so you can join in with that, it's up to you. Um, but I'll send out the link for Friday Listening Prayer. It starts next week at nine o'clock on Friday. Also starting soon is Thy Kingdom Come. We'll be sending out information uh, over the next week or so about Thy Kingdom Come. This is the 10 days between Ascension and Pentecost and we are going to be having the church open for various activities at different hours of each of those days with some creative uh, crafts, responses, meditations and an art installation in the church. Uh, more information to follow that starts on Thursday the 13th of May. Now, you might be aware that it's Christian Aid Week coming up and also the situation in India at the moment, which is quite terrible. So I'm going to tell you what we're doing about both of those two things. Um, firstly, uh, we are responding to the situation in India uh, by initially we've sent off £500 donation to South Asian Concern, a Christian organisation that works in India uh, and supports a hospital uh, in India, which is uh, a COVID hospital and is running short of oxygen. Uh, so we've uh, donated there from what we have in our charity fund. But if you want to add to that, um, then you're welcome to. Please donate to the church in the usual way and using the reference India. You can also give by cash or cheque if you want to or directly via the South Asian Concern website. So do please do that over the next week if you can and then we will transfer that money to them. Christian Aid Week starts next week and in preparation for that uh, we're going to hear from Karen uh, telling us what we can do about the collections but first we're going to watch a Christian Aid video uh, from a wonderful lady called Florence. So let's watch this and then we'll hear from Karen about what we can do. <laughs> Come <laughs> Na 
Ndio <laughs> Good morning, it's me again asking for your help. This time it's for Christian Aid Week, which is the 10th to the 16th of May. The theme of the appeal this year is climate change, which as we all know is an issue that's hugely important to tackle right now. It's a bit different this year as we have delivery only envelopes. So I'm asking for volunteers to deliver to roads in the local area. We don't call back to collect, but there is a space on the back of the envelope to say where people can leave their donations. If you're comfortable with this and live close to the road you deliver to, please could you put your address on the back? Uh, but if you're not okay, you can put the church. There are also details about how to donate online or by phone. We thought this was the best way to spread the Christian aid message into the wider community. If you would like to help, please could you contact me. My details are on Church Suite. Thank you. So do please speak to Karen if you want to get involved in the collections. Birthdays this week. We have a important birthday on Tuesday. It's Chris N's birthday. I'm not gonna tell you how old he is, but let's just say it's a special one. Uh, so Chris, uh, who does a lot of work as our treasurer and has done for many years, um, thank you. If I could count as well as you, I'd know what number it was, but I've got no idea because I get lost after about 68, 69. Uh, so there you go. It's also uh, Sophie B's birthday, Oscar G's birthday and Alison's birthday this week. So a very happy birthday to you. So as we draw our service to a close, we're going to sing uh, another song, a great Easter song about what Jesus has done for us and who he is. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. And then we'll close with a blessing. So thank you for being with us today, wherever you have joined us from. And we'll see you again next week. Jesus blood and died for
May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.